Hello and welcome to the Concentra webinar, Outcomes and Reporting, Measuring Occupational Health Program Effectiveness. Today's webinar will be presented by Ruth LaRocca. Ruth is the Director of Clinical Analytics at Concentra. She identifies the emerging analytic needs of our employer clients and oversees the team of analysts who perform the critical work of producing insightful, client-specific outcomes reports. Ruth continues to develop new and innovative methods to measure and report the impact of Concentra's occupational health products and services. At the conclusion of the presentation, we will have a 10 to 15 minute Q&A session with Ruth. You can submit your questions throughout the presentation to be answered during the Q&A. Ruth will answer as many questions as possible within the time allowed. A recording of the webinar and the slides will be emailed to you after the presentation so you can view it again at your convenience. Ruth, we're ready to begin. Thank you, Anna, and welcome to everybody. I'm glad you could join today. So our agenda today is we're going to talk about what, what is the role of an occupational health provider? Is your occupational health provider helping you meet your goal? And then we're going to talk about what are outcomes and why do we measure them? And then we're going to talk about how do we evaluate outcomes? And I'm going to show you some of the reporting that we produce on a client-specific basis. All right. So the role of an occupational health provider, these are some of the things your health provider should help you do and what you should expect. They should deliver non-injury services like drug testing, medical surveillance. They should deliver workplace injury care services. They should help employers meet local, state, and federal workplace safety and health standards, advise on how to develop and sustain a healthy, safe working environment, help devise an occupational health strategy based on the employer's health and safety challenges and goals. So achieving the best results from each of these things requires two things, clear communication um, and partnership between you and your provider. So clinical inform informatics allows us to identify, measure, affect, and perpetuate best practices both among our internal clinicians and clear communications allow us to demonstrate the values and core competencies to you, our external clients. So is your occupational health provider helping you meet your goals? Where's their evidence of success? So if these are the things that we just mentioned are what you would expect from your occupational health provider, how do you know if they're helping you reach your workplace workforce health goals? There needs to be a means to measure occupational health program progress based on your predefined goals. In other words, what are the outcomes? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, is a strong advocate of outcomes measurement in occupational health. In fact, the CDC's workplace health model includes recommendations that mirror the guidance provided in the CDC's framework for program evaluation in public health, where outcomes measurement is a vital part of program evaluation. So we need to measure them so we can um, establish that we are actually helping you meet your goals. Let's talk about what are outcomes. So the WHO, the World Health Organization, defines outcomes as the effect the process has on the people targeted by it. So there's other large organizations like CMS, the Joint Commission, and HEDIS that have their own definitions. But don't get caught in the quagmire of all the definitions and quantities of measures. The key is really to take the definitions and make them work on a series of specific measures that you're being tracked. But if we look at the WHO definition, there are really three separate but equally powerful things in that statement. Process, people, and effect. So if you think about that in a non-healthcare framework, financial results are really outcomes. They're designed to inform the organization of the revenues, expenses, and net income. And process is the method by which the organization achieves those goals. So what's the product or service? How is it marketed and sold? What's the price point? Who are the people targeted by the process? Their employees, their customers, their shareholders? And what's the effect of the process? You have sales, returns, customer satisfaction, you have bonuses or commissions, your stock price, and the outcomes are measuring the effects of that process on all the people targeted by it. So another example, and probably one of the most extensive set of outcomes measures exists in sports. The overall outcomes, which are wins, losses, or championships, are supported by an extensive set of intermediary measures. 
attempts, misses, assists, interceptions, completions, RBIs, home runs, heights, weights, ages of players. You have uh, an enormous uh, amount of sports statistics. To follow the sports analogy, every organization has a process to achieve the results, and that process may encompass many different aspects. You have scouting, you have training, conditioning, coaching, offense, defense, special teams, and the outcomes reflect on how well those processes are working. So choosing appropriate outcomes measurement should give you insight into where and how to tweak the process if the outcomes aren't what you expect. So do you need to beef up your offensive line? Do you need a new kicker? Or can you work with the kicker you have to gain more accuracy? Do you need a new offensive coordinator? How can you do better at scouting new talent? When you think about that WHO definition in a healthcare setting, you can see that the process has an effect on patients, clinicians, front office staff, employers and payers, and that measuring the effects of those targeted can be extensive and it requires planning. So one thing to keep in mind is that while you can talk about the outcome of a case, what we're talking about here in terms of outcomes are the outcomes of the process as a whole. So the effect that the process has on those targeted, the outcomes are not measured on a transactional or case-by-case -case level, but rather as a periodic assessment of the program as a whole. Just as you wouldn't measure the corporation's results by one sale or one expense, or your favorite sports team's results by one interception, one touchdown, or one win or loss, your healthcare program shouldn't be measured by one case, but rather overall. So what are outcomes as defined by Concentra? To reframe outcomes back to healthcare and the partnership with your occupational health provider, Concentra's been measuring outcomes for more than 20 years, and we define outcomes as an empirical, evidence-based system of measuring how claims are being managed through the process, and across the injury population over time. And we have a very extensive databases of cases to refer to with over 700,000 cases annually. So as your occupational health partner, we want to share with you how we manage the cases we treat. And while you may have other goals, metrics, and data that we don't have as your provider, but as your provider partner, we do want to share the outcomes and insights for the cases that we treat in our physical and virtual centers. One of the ways we do that is to measure the cases that close during a period and look at the outcomes in terms of four categories of measures. So we look at frequency. So how many times does something occur on average per case? So an example might be the number of MD visits or the number of PT visits. We look at intervals. What's the time elapsed between events? For example, how many days was it to your first PT visit? We look at the rate. How often does something occur within the population? For example, what is the percent of population that was referred to a specialist or physical therapy? And then we look at duration, which is how long does something last? So as an example of a duration measure we would look at would be the disability period or the case duration. So why do we measure outcomes? Now that we've discussed what outcomes are, we can look at why we measure them. We broadly said earlier that choosing appropriate outcomes measurements should give you insight into where and how to tweak the process if the outcomes aren't what you expect or desire. So if you look at this chart, the top line really represents overall program goals I think everybody could agree on. We want to promote work injury prevention, reduce direct and indirect costs of work injuries, monitor and improve outcomes amidst changing work populations, promote acceptance and implementation of best practices, and monitor and improve patient satisfaction. Those are sort of broad overall goals. The second line of icons are really measurements or benchmarks. We want to assess the current status to know where we are. Are we already on top of our game, or do we have areas where we can improve? Where can we reduce indirect indirect costs? How can we improve patient satisfaction? We need to know where we are in order to, to determine those things. We want to monitor trends to ensure we're moving in the right direction and to catch any negative trends early on so we can implement interventions. We want to identify variations in care. That's not to say that every case should be treated exactly the same, but we want to identify where there are variations in care. And the variations may be entirely valid due to local regulations, differences in populations, or other factors. But we want to identify and understand the differences. Or they may signify a shift. Maybe the injury population has changed. Maybe they're seasonal workers. 
Maybe there was a new acquisition or line of business. Maybe it's a shift due to external forces like a regulation or a pandemic. We want to identify areas where interventions can improve care. If there are trends suggesting external influences, such as a pandemic or a new regulation, or there are changes in the workforce population, such as seasonal workers, how can we address those areas? We want to be able to pinpoint those trends and work to address them. We want to provide evidence about the effectiveness of the intervention program. If we implement an intervention, we would want to measure and track that intervention to ensure it's having the intended effect. If it's not, we would want to refine that intervention or possibly implement a different one. So in summary, why do we want to measure outcomes? We want to view how our programs and interventions are functioning and where we might direct our attention. So we've defined what outcomes are and we've talked about why we want to measure them. But measurements on their own don't necessarily help. If we see for example, that our case duration is X. What does that really mean? We have to evaluate that measurement in order to understand it. So how do you evaluate outcomes? One way to evaluate outcomes is to compare to the industry as a whole or to a peer group. We said earlier that it's important to know where we currently stand, and comparing ourselves to peer groups is a good way to do that. It gives us context. Another way to look at year is to look at year over year or period over period comparisons. Are we getting better? Are we getting worse? Are we staying the same? We can also compare against subpopulations. So we can compare against our own market, our own state, our own industry. We can compare to others in your same industry or same geography to also gain context. Again, once we evaluate the outcomes and see how we compare, we can implement targeted improvement programs. If we haven't done the evaluations, we may not know where to target the improvement initiative. But by doing them, we can gauge where to intervene. And lastly, we need to monitor and assess the results on an ongoing basis so we can continue to improve. Also, by monitoring on a regular basis when conditions do change, we can be on the front end of those changes with the ability to respond quickly. So as we've talked through what outcomes are and how to measure and evaluate outcomes, you've started to see that it's really a process. When you evaluate the outcomes, you want to identify the most beneficial areas for improvement. What's going to get you the biggest bang for your buck? What's the highest priority? So if you see a trend that affects 1% of the population and another trend affects 20% of the population, it may be more beneficial to target the broadest area. Next, you need to plan your improvement program. What will it consist of? Is it an awareness program? Does it require training? Does it need system changes? Is there a review process? After you plan and develop the improvement program, how will you implement it? What's the communication plan? Is there training involved? How will you enforce it? Are you going to need to do audits of the program? Once the program is implemented, then the cycle really starts over. You will monitor and assess the results of both the overall outcomes and the effects of the new intervention. Is it having the desired effect? Is it affecting other areas of your program that were not intended? Are there any changes that needed to be made? So the CDC says, effective program evaluation systematically examines the implementation and results of strategies and interventions with the aim of using findings to improve those actions. As such, it's important the evaluation approach be useful, useful feasible, ethical, and accurate. And the CDC outlines a series of five steps to help ensure program evaluation, including outcomes measurement, meet the criteria to provide results that will be of value in program implement improvement. Step number one is to engage your stakeholders. So who are your stakeholders that the occupational health program will benefit? Who are the stakeholders that will make decisions about the program's value, the continuation and funding? Have conversations with stakeholders and use the feedback to determine the most important parts of the program to include in the evaluation. Number two would be describe the program. So commit to the key elements of your occupational health and safety program in writing. Make sure to document the aspects most important to key stakeholders and decision makers based on the feedback you got from them. Decide on the benchmarks whose achievements will make the program a success, making sure those aspects align with the areas your decision makers believe are most important in an occupational health program. Create the program, sorry, step three, create the program evaluation design. 
the CDC identifies three types of measures that are fundamental to program evaluation. And they are baseline measures, which we talked about. We need to know where we are. So baseline measures are the critical measures to be taken at the start of the program, and more positive or negative changes will be measured over time. Process measures, which can help you determine if you've taken the wrong approach with your program or the right approach with a faulty implementation. Process measures can also assess the cost of operating the program and the number of employees reached. And then outcomes measures, which assess the program's effectiveness in meeting your goals and impact over the short, medium, and long term, including the associated costs. Outcomes of interest depends on your program, but it may include things like program uh, or employee productivity, improvement of health status, changes in healthcare utilization, and changes in the workplace health and safety culture. Step number four is to gather credible evidence. And in this case, evidence is simply the information that you or your occupational health provider gather about your program's results and impact. And evidence is more credible when it's gathered in a way that's respected by your decision makers, either through your system or an employee survey, for example. When multiple procedures are used for gathering, analyzing, and interpreting data, and when participation by employees and other stakeholders is higher. Step number five is to justify conclusions. Measuring an array of outcomes and amassing information about program results is not your end game. We talked about just measuring is not the, the last thing. You need to evaluate them. And the evaluation must lead to conclusions that are tied to the evidence and developed through analysis and synthesis uh, to identify patterns and trends interpretation to uncover what the findings mean, and judgments, which are statements about the worth of, worth of the program or individual aspect. And lastly, recommendations, so the actions that should become the next logical step after the evaluation. Step number six, ensure use and share the lessons learned. So the findings of your program evaluation won't become reality or lead to program improvements without focused and strategic follow-up, and knowledge has to be translated into action. That begins with communication to the relevant audiences in an atmosphere of trust. So now you know how to, what they are, how to, why we measure them, how to evaluate them. So this appendix I'm going to show you is um, an example of what we do here at Concentra. So Concentra, as your occupational healthcare partner, wants to share with you the outcomes we measure to show you how we manage your cases. And as part of that, we produce a comprehensive, customer-specific quarterly outcomes report, which we call the Compass Report, to summarize the care your employees received in our clinics. This reporting includes comparisons of year-over-year -year results. We also produce the same reporting for industry, states, and markets that can be used for comparison. We also provide reporting by channel, in clinic, telemedicine, and on-site clinics. And from this reporting, your Concentra account team can work with you to provide actionable insight on injury frequency, utilization, duration, and cost. So there are seven pages or topics or chapters that walk you through the outcomes of the cases closed in the reporting period. Pictured here is the Workers' Compensation Program Summary, which is the first chapter. Um, and it gives you a one-page executive overview of your cases and outcomes. And you'll also see on the right-hand side an insight section, which explains why we are include, including these metrics, why it's important, how to interpret it, and in certain areas, comparisons to industry standards. The other chapters are listed there, the injury case profile, medical referrals and visit utilization, physical therapy referrals and therapy utilization, return to work management, disability to duration, and primary care duration and charge profile. So on the next slide, you'll see some examples of what this looks like. Each of these pages gives you a glimpse into the reporting by chapter or topic. The injury profile chapter provides you a breakdown of injuries with a year-over-year -year comparison and a breakdown of cases by gender. The medical referrals and visit utilization show you the utilization rates along with any prescription utilization. Physical therapy referrals and therapy utilization show you physical therapy utilization rate. Um, and then these last three pages, the first two of these chapters give you insights into the return to work management and disability duration. And the last chapter wraps it all up with the primary care duration 
and charge profile and allows you to assess the overall duration of the cases closed in the period. So that is what we provide and your team can discuss with you um, to show you how we manage your cases and where we can draw insights and help you to improve your program. That is the end of my presentation. So uh, if anyone has questions, I'll turn it over to you to ask a question. 